Not in the bar. Not sitting at home watching TV. Yeah. Yeah. Kicking back. Now we in church. Hallelujah. We praise and worship. We bow the throne. We thank God again for this privilege. It's a privilege to serve God. And especially to give holiness. We thank God for protecting us yet another day from this deadly disease that's sweeping across the country. And if it were not for that, they got a hurricane just off the coast of Louisiana. Telling people, hope that you left yesterday trying to run that hurricane. You can't run from God. Hallelujah. No matter where you go. So I just thank God that He has saved us and spared us. And allow us to be in a position of comfort. And I say that even in this dispensation of time where we are going through a wilderness journey, death and destruction is everywhere, yet He has given us a position of comfort. Amen. And we will stay in that comfort zone until God's grace is stopped. And when the devil upstairs, worry is half the death. Worry ain't never solved the problem. And it never will. Yeah. Worry number the word. Activated by the devil. Yeah. To create an emotion that's not like God. Yeah. God don't want you unhappy. Yeah. He wants you unhappy. He wants you happy in the church because of a promise. Now the promise is not physical. The promise is spiritual. Yeah. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. That's spiritual. So therefore, I create in my emotion a peace knowing that God is with me, no matter what I'm going through. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to understand, I'm going through something right now. Yeah. Preacher, you don't know what I'm going through, but I'm going through something. But I know one thing, if you're in church, God is going through with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. He said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Lord. Let's hold on to the unchanging hand of God. Yeah. As you pray for folks here. Little daughter Rosie, two dollars. Yeah. Little Victor, ninety-one dollars. Yeah. Um, brother, brother Robert, one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Samaya, two hundred dollars. He can smile Three hundred thousand. Yeah. I know I did a baseball check for playing professional baseball. Yeah. Almost a thousand dollars a month. Right. And uh, I've only spent one of it for myself. And I've been getting it for what now about two years. Yeah. Every one of them been going to church accounts. Yeah. And I'm glad you got it. I ain't never used no church money for personal use unless it was absolutely necessary. I never bought no car with church money. I ain't never bought no brand new wardrobe with church money. I ain't never bought no home with church money. I mean, that time that we sell it did not belong to the church. That was me and mother's money before we got saved. But nevertheless, I borrowed $50,000 on that condo to get this church right here. Yeah. Some of them remember $124,000 when we only had $75,000. Right. That's when I got that condo in the street for So I'm hard on it. Get the money to pay off the church. Yeah. Get about no more than that. Right. 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 And get ready to sell that condo. Yeah. And you know what I'm going to do with most of that money? Right in the church. Yeah. So when I go to blow, I can stand before the throne of God. Because I'm part of this family. And I can give my best to preach the truth to a lost and dying world. And I feel real good about it. And I really want to give myself a pat on the back. I never told you. I never told you money for myself. You got it right there. A whole lot of people can't make this for you. Hear me, T.D. Jakes. Hear me, George Smiles. Hear me, Kenneth Copeland. Hallelujah. And what's this? 
Uh, Tough no dollar. Yes. Yes. They bought a private jet, yes. which means he got to pay a private jet pilot because he can fly yep. himself. Amen. And young people, you know, if they turn down their airline money, you know how much you're paying them. Yeah. 150, 200,000 dollars a year. That's right. And expense account. Yeah. Where they get that money from? Mm -hmm. Never punch a time clock in their life. Yes. From foolish people. That's right. Who do not understand the word of God. Yeah. You know in the Bible, the Paul never said, uh, I want five hundred dollars a week for my salary. Glory to God. He never said that. Nobody. Why? Because he had all the church money for himself. Yeah. But he never used it for his personal purpose. Right, right, right. I mean, he said, I went to another church to steal money from him to pay off another church. Yeah. How do you mean? Got a pass in the other church, he said, well, you keep taking money from my Yeah. Right, because another church needed it. Yeah. So he said, I, I, I robbed him. I robbed him. And what did the pastor say at that church? Couldn't say nothing, right? But Paul appointed him to be the pastor. He didn't say I robbed the church because I want a brand new car. All right. All right. She had to help out another church. Right. Praise God. Amen. And I tell people about the third Sunday offering. Me. Yes, right. Amen. What are you going to do with it? Well, there's a whole lot of things I could do with it. Not better than investing in the church of God. Amen. You invest in Wall Street, but one day Wall Street's coming down. Or oh, oh, you can do something about it. You can do something about it. Well, I feel like preaching. Glory. But when you invest in heaven, all you do is stand up a foundation, another brick in my mansion. It's already there. You, you just kind of decorate a little bit more. Do it. Let me put a little sun porch over here. So I, can, I want to see that cloud when it come past over here. Hallelujah. I might want to cough to catch hold to it. I want you to go across heaven. I want to see how the wagon from here. See how you're doing. Oh, it sounds like a story to you, but it's a true story. Watch. God said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house and many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Well, there you may be with me always. And God never broke a promise in his life. We can break a promise to God. But God will never break a promise to us. So we thank God for our testimony. And uh, before I get into my message, amen, uh, I want to hear from the heavenly voices as it sang the blood. Praise the Lord. Oh, uh -huh. 
you ready to answer your call? Have you been faithful to Jesus at home? It's awful difficult in this dispensation of time to preach uh, the truth when there's so much unbelief running rampant. Yeah. And many times, as in the false churches that you see everywhere, they teach half the truth and half a lie. But well, I said many, many times before, a woman can't be halfway pregnant. Amen. Either she's pregnant or she's not. Amen. Either you found the truth or you're not. Yeah. And sometimes the word of God, it seems hard, which it is. But it's to straighten out a condition. You just can't take a little bit of love. Jesus said that you love one another. And he used that for the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Man, you, you got to have the word of God and you got to be hitting hard. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. Keep hitting it hard. Yeah. A little fountain dripping in the sink ain't going to fill up no river. Yeah. I don't know how long you let it drip. Because it can only do so much. But if the word of God over and over and over and over again keep pounding you on your head, pretty soon something's going to happen. You don't get a headache. Praise God. In order for you to get right, wrong has to be preached out. In order for a church to be right, sin has to be preached out of the church. But we're in a dispensation of time where sin is in the church and not being preached out of the church. Homosexuals in the choir. Preachers not preaching out against sodomy and lesbian behavior. People don't know what is right and what is wrong today. Yeah. And when you get a preacher who will stand up for the truth, no, I don't want to go to that church. You, 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 you gospel is too hard. No, I don't need all that. I don't need nobody telling me what to do. Listen, if you don't know how to get to heaven, you've got to ask somebody, how do I get there? Amen. That's for anything, any form of direction. How do I get from here to uh, New Mexico. You ain't never been there before? No, I ain't never been there. But well, maybe you better ask somebody who know the way. Amen. But you gotta make sure you know the way. Amen. I, I shared I shared the story of uh, uh, Bishop Johnson was going and preaching in South Carolina and he left Philadelphia. And he told his minister, said, mm, I left the address on my dresser. It's all right, don't worry. It ain't but one Pentecostal church in a little small town. So a man standing on the corner said, could you tell us where the Pentecostal church is? Man thought. He said, yeah, give me a dollar. I'll take you there. Go back in the late 30s, 40s, dollar was a lot of money. Yeah. He said, come, come on, get in. And he smelled the alcohol on uh, Matter of fact, he had so much alcohol on his breath, but some of the preachers got high. <laughs> Went down one street. When the brother said, you know where you're going? He didn't say nothing. He said, go ahead and turn down this street. The bus said, you sure you know where you're going? He didn't say nothing. He said, well, go up here to the post office and turn left at the post office. Went to the post office and left. The bus said, you know where you're going? He didn't say nothing. He said, cross the railroad track and I want you to turn right. I know where it is. Went down across the railroad track and turned right. And finally, Bishop John said, wait a minute, young man. He said, do you know where you're going? The man said, well, if y'all keep arguing, you're going to make me think I'm lost. <laughs> 
sometimes other people, you got to know where you're going. You just can't have fish in your body where you're going. You got to make sure you know where you're going. But since we're in a damn time, people don't know the way to church. You have to go to any kind of church, any kind of church, and hear any kind of message. But you better know how to go to a holiness church and get yourself rooted and grounded in the holiness church. And don't let the word of God come to you and make you mad. Well, if you get mad, don't get mad at the church. Don't get mad at the word of God. Get mad at the devil who has tricked you all these many years. Hallelujah. And I'm in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 24. Get ready in verse 1. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign, uh -huh. and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. Yes. His mother's name also was Zibia of Beersheba. Uh -huh. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Wait a minute. Joab, he ruled. Yes. And, and the Bible says he said that he did that which was right in the sight of God. Yes. I read. All the days of Jehoiada the priest. Uh -huh. And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. He got two wives. That, that was back in the Old Testament, wasn't it? Yes, sir. You can't do it in this Testament. No. Uh, you can't do it on the wrist. Y'all hear me? And you hear the good preachers out there. Uh -huh. You got two and three wives. You, you better get right. Yes. Amen. Yes. And get out there pull a bit. And try to print before God. Amen. You can't have it one way. Right. Yes. At a time. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come out that pulpit. Yes. A fornicator is still a fornicator, and a daughter is still an adulterer. Amen. And none of these should inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, God sent me here to tell some of these hypocrite preachers you need to sit down and get right. Yes. Maybe you ought to turn, you know. Uh, YouTube on and follow me. Oh, and you come down this spot and let your hands on me and you will not off and you will not face for you. Read. And it came to pass, came after, to pass. This, after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. He was reminded to fix up the church. Uh huh. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites. All the preachers. And said to them, uh -huh. Go out unto the cities of Judah and gather of all Israel money. Oh, to wait, stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. But the Bible says he did that was right in the sight of God, didn't yeah. it? Yes. Go to all the people, all the congregation, and gather money That's right. for the church of God. Yes. Anytime I tell you to give your third Sunday offering, it's not for me. All right. Yes. Yes. It's for the church of God. Yes. I'm saying that kind of what we're trying to do, and some of the people know about it. We're trying to get us a restaurant yes. Yes. where these brothers can come out of this filthy, sick factories yes. that they're making people work around people they know about the place. Yes. Don't you know that's, oh, how do you do Here's a brother going to work with two people around him got the COVID, and their family got the COVID, and they still let him come to work. That's right. And then to quit. Yep. That's all right. Keep staying in the church. Keep praying. Yeah. Keep fasting every Monday, yeah. and you won't see that devil that's trying to make all that money right. off of working people. Though he's laying out in the beach in Miami somewhere, I hope that hurricane come through there. All right, yeah. And don't miss him. Lord, he ain't punching no time clock, but he got people punching a time clock. Yeah. And don't care who works. Ought there not be a place of protection for the environment which you work? Yeah. Should you work have to work around a person who already got the COVID? And that thing spread like a cold. Yep. You yep. know everybody here then had a cold at a time or two. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And that cold spread disease as a cold. Sure and only they ain't decimated this church because we keep praying and praying. Oh, yeah. 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 Go get the money so we can do what we have to do. We're trying to get a restaurant, and I'm not talking about two, three years down the road. I'm talking about a fix a fire a quick we can find a place. Yeah. We're gonna fix something that the people want to eat. So these brothers come out these factories and work in the restaurant. Yeah, all right. Yeah. They didn't work hard enough. Sacrifice a whole lot. Give him over five, six, seven hundred dollars, two, three thousand dollars, one brother can get him up to nine thousand five hundred dollars, and he can afford that as much as uh, uh, this baby over here. Yeah. But what's he doing? He got an envelope that got a in the head, and he looked past his knees and saw the knees of the church. And gave it to the church. I'm talking about laughing, smiling about it. Somebody didn't like it. You ain't got no heaven. You ain't got no heaven. Yeah. So the one who likes it and is happy is somebody who got a heaven and I am here. Right. So what place you 
want to go. So if this brother don't want to go to hell, and he said, you're never going to give it to the church. He said, no, it's out of my head. He's up to the church. I've done my part. And God got to do his part. And I promise you one thing before the God of God, he'll do his part. And what we've got to do is understand, it's not about self. He should let a man deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow after me. Once you follow after God, hallelujah, you've got a pathway to be in heaven. But you've got to keep your feet still on the narrow pathway. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 31. I want to go, go to that real quick. Yes, sir. Same chapter. Okay, you mean first one was 15. Uh, 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 you're in 2 Samuel. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, chapter, what did I say? Chapter 24. No, chapter 15. 15 and 31. And 31. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators. Now, Absalom rebelled against his father, who was the king. David. Yeah. Absalom was the one in line to be king after David was gone. Yeah. But Absalom was so ambitious, mm -hmm. he didn't want to wait till after his father David was dead. He wanted to take over the kingdom now. Yeah. So Absalom was so strong in his personality, he gathered all the captains of the host yeah. to go against David. Yeah. So much so until David had to run to the mountain and hide from Absalom. Amen. But when he got to the mountain, hallelujah, give me the 23rd Psalm. Hold your place right there. I'm coming right back now. Okay. 23rd Psalm. David had to flee from his son Absalom because Absalom liked to kill him. Yeah. I'm talking about great God did because yeah. he wanted to be the king. Yeah. 23rd Psalm, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David broke this song when he had to flee from his son, Absalom, who was trying to usurp his authority and take over the crown. Yes. But Absalom forgot one thing. God appointed David right, right. And if God appoints you, nigga, can't nobody take you down? Yeah. Can't nobody vote you down? Yeah. Can't no army of a host come against David oh, if yeah. God is for David? Yeah. People get their priorities mixed up. Yeah. Everybody's priorities mixed up. Right. He does like get all of David's captains, yeah. all of his fine generals, all of his cavalry, yeah. his mighty soldiers. I can take over the throne. Lord. But Absalom forgot one thing. Right. If God be for you, who can be you? So David wrote that song, The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Now watch close where he's going. I shall not walk. Now wait, he starts out saying, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my so shepherd. So he's trying to show God, I'm putting this thing in your hands. Yes. It's out of my hands. Because you, 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 my, you, my, you, my God. Amen. You, my shepherd. Hallelujah. You, my leader. Yes. You, my everything. Yes. And what? I shall not what? Shall I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, if God didn't talk about life, I ain't got to worry about a thing. How do you do And I want you to understand one thing. When it came to him, it was in the bell with the most the potent spirit. Yeah. His chief advisor. Yeah. Not only the son turned against him, he turned around and somebody told him, hey, get the bell. Yeah. Your number one counselor. Right. Your chief counselor. Right. He's with the conspirators. Right. My God, and David wrote that song. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What do you say? He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. When you worry to death, my goodness, how am I going to get out of this? He'll give you a peace. The path and understand it. Make you lay down and go sound the sleep. Like a little baby. Green passages. Now he's paraphrasing here. Yeah. Read. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Uh -huh. He restored my soul. Now I shared with people still waters is dangerous. Yeah. Because in 
those particular areas of that country still waters, it, the quicksand lies underneath. Yes. And uh, many an animal went to get a drink of water and stepped into that that water. Yes. But there's quicksand underneath. Yes. And went down. And the more you struggle in quicksand, you know, the deeper you go in. Right. So David said, the Lord needs me besides still water. Uh -huh. He restores my soul. He encourages me when things are going wrong. He hit the flag left me. My son and left me. He took the army against me. But he restored my soul. Uh huh. He leads me in the path of righteousness. He going to still keep me in the church. Yes. yes. All right. He's still going to keep me in the church. Yes. And even though what? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What? I will fear no evil. I don't care who comes against me. Yes. Absolutely, Hitler fell, and whoever else. And the devil, he can come along too. But I'm not going to worry about it. Brothers, if you make up your mind before I leave you this morning, that God is the all in all. I don't care what comes against you. I don't care who seems to get you. I don't care what they say about you. As long as you keep Jesus on your mind. But he went to a high place. Yes. But when he went to that high place, yes. Yes. hallelujah. He said, wait a minute, y'all get away from me because I got to do a little talking yes. here. Right. And he started out by saying, the Lord's my shepherd. He's telling God, uh, you're in charge. Yes. I'm here. And I had to do a little running for my son because, because I know you're going to take care of everything. Now watch. When the messenger came to David, David didn't ask how the battle was going, did he? No. He asked the messenger, he said, how's my son? Messenger, we didn't tell him to turn out one away. Another messenger comes and said, David said, I don't know about the battle. Because I already know how the battle is going. I know God ain't going to let me down. How's my son? Because he still loved his son. Brother and sister, David loved Absalom. And he even wanted to figure out what he was going to uh, punish, put him on a punishment. But Absalom had not rebelled against David. Absalom had to rebel against God. And when the third messenger comes and said, David said, how's my son? He, he lies dead like the other of your enemies. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Hanging from a tree. Yes. Oh, yes. And David, the Bible said he lamented. Yep. He was sorrowful. He said, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. If I could have just, I just covered you, put you in time. Yes. I'd have forgiven you for everything. That's how much he loved his son. Yes. Brothers and sisters, but when you offend God, you might as well stand out the way. Yeah. What did he tell Moses mm -hmm. when they conspired against him? He told uh, of Miriam and uh, Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, when you afraid to speak against my prophet? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. And when Aaron, who was little sissy, yeah. his sister tell me everything. <laughs> We're going to survive, we're going to take over. Mm -hmm. Israel, Moses, just like us, he ain't got no business telling us what to do and all this. No, praise God. Mary was the instigator. Amen. Aaron was one who just wanted to follow, mm -hmm. tag along to see. Yes. Yeah, he's annoying. Yeah, if you get control, I'll be number two. Mm -hmm. You old coward, you. Hallelujah. There's a first place and there's a last place. There ain't no such thing as second right. and third. Yeah, First is first and second ain't nobody. Amen. And God is always is first place. Yes. No kind of hey, hey don't, don't never try to be like get this. I got rid of the cigarettes, but I'm gonna still take a drink every now and then. Yeah. I, I got rid of the drink, but I'm just gonna take a puff every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I want I don't buy a pack, but I'm gonna make it last me a month. Lord. Listen, you still going to hear. Amen. Amen. This old preacher. You gotta give her all of it. Every sin that so easily besets you. I don't care what it is, get rid of it. Amen. And you got the power and the authority of God because God said you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Amen. I can't do it myself. Amen. Man, ain't no way you can tell me I wouldn't want my no lottery ticket for a dollar and it said 24 million. Yeah. <laughs> somebody hit that, ain't that what the devil tell you? Somebody gonna hit it. Or somebody hit it every, every month or whatever. Yeah. Don't they? Right, Praise God. And when the devil gets through talking, you say, well, Lord, I'm, I'm going to let me just go across town and get me a ticket. Because you think there ain't nobody going to see me. I'll leave you. 
And when I bought that last ticket, I felt so guilty. And right. I took that thing and I held it up to it. I'm driving down the road and I held on to it. And I held on to it. Pretty soon I said, right. Goodbye, God. Yes. I'm through with you. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And sometimes you got to tell the devil, I'm through with you. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I don't want no more else to do with you. Yes. And then, yes. once you make up our mind, let me say to you, I told you, let me read chapter 2. Anytime that you extricate yourself from a sinful life, you got to put a covenant of protection around you. That's why you can't tell them TV preachers and hear all that garbage they preach. Brother and Sister Sam is so convincing. My goodness, you go, wow. He has short scripture. And they'll go to the scripture. Mm -hmm. Saved by grace and not by works, as any man shall boast. Yep. I heard the preacher say, if you even try to live right, that's works and you're going to hell. Glory to God. Hey, they, they had a packed out house. Right. I had, you know, I, had to eat. I was sitting in the back, I just want to see what he had to say. He eased up and eased on out the door. And one of the usher said, Where'd you go? I said, I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you say somebody said that? He said, You sure did. Yeah. Go. And, and, and no sisters arguing about me because I got not coming on down the road. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Peter, he said we got to pray for Peter because Peter preached uh, in his second mm -hmm. epistle, and I'm going to get to it in a minute, and he said Peter don't understand, so let's pray for Peter. Oh, yeah. He's a preacher. On earth, and he's going to pray for Peter already. Mm -hmm. ready to go to right. God didn't right. preach the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to pray for Peter. Right. You need somebody to pray for you. All right. yeah. Yeah. You, you, matter of fact, you ought to uh, uh, wish that Peter could come back down and pray for you. Because you need somebody with a whole lot of intercessory power. Yeah, oh. yeah. Good gracious. Yeah. Give me a second, Peter. Chapter 2. Yeah. Verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. There were false prophets among the people. Even as there should be false teachers among you. Is that what he said? That's right. Are they here right today? Yeah. Right. I'm pointing them out as best, best I can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, leave them devils alone. Yeah. They don't mean you no good because they don't mean themselves no good. Their heaven is on earth. Amen. And all the money these foolish people give to them and knowing, you need to tell me, you're going to give me your envelope and I'm going to go outside and get me a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> you got a car that sometimes it started, sometimes it don't. You got something. They had a brother last night. I had to call somebody say, hey, my problem so come and give me a boost. All right. Glory. But I'm going to jump out and get in the Mercedes Benz. Say, where, where, where was your envelope last Sunday? Mm -hmm. Lord. Listen, always study the character of your preacher. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, I ain't just coming to you from yesterday. Yeah. When I tell you, put that. Third Sunday often in the envelope, you can't question me. Yeah. 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 I sold mother's home for hundred and ten thousand dollars to get that church on Seven Mile Road. Yeah. And they stole my car about a week later. Glory to God. Praise God. I think Ben Wagner he got by, by me that, that, that car. Yeah. Uh, with your uh, mother Wallace, y'all. Yeah. And uh, I think I bought a used car for twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. Something like that. He had to put a butter knife to hold the window up. Glory. And had to dive in uh, water pedals, pop yeah. up pedals. <laughs> Splash up on the floorboard and get your pants all wet. Amen. Amen. And when I got a hold of some money, I put it right back in the church. Hallelujah. And the more money I got, I back in the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Man called me up one day and said, uh, I've been preaching against the Catholic Church. I'm going to say that in a minute. Preach. Preach. <laughs> Call me up. And just got a phone call saying, you, you preach against mother, uh, Mary. I said, yeah, I preach against Mary. He said, well, now, Mary is the mother of God. I said, that's a lie. You can go tell Mary when you see her. I said so. <laughs> Mary is dead. That's right. Man, sometimes, oh, sometimes you go into church and they want to sell you uh, the, the church. They were buying a whole lot of Catholic churches back in Michigan back then because the Catholic church was kind of going under. And uh, I didn't have enough money to, to buy one. But uh, they take out the stained glass. And if they got marble, they take the marble out. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But if I had a ball when I told them, now don't, don't forget that statue of Mary. We're going to take the stained glass out and take that fine. But take that statue with you also. Yeah. Right. 
she didn't have money and dirty. Yeah. Really dead. Good woman now, don't misunderstand me. Good woman. Because she was handpicked. Amen. Amen. And I, ain't no doubt not mine, she's going to glory. Amen. Yeah, when, when the judgment. Because ain't nobody in heaven yet. Amen. You got to stand for the judgment. Right? Amen. Amen. Every soul. So I'm saying, praise God. Uh, brothers, we've got to understand. This is a warfare. Where does he go? Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. Give me verse 4. Verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned. Wait. There was angels in heaven yes. that sinned. Do you know there was corruption in heaven? Yep. Why? Because God never had robots in heaven. Amen. The devil was not a robot. Amen. He and he had a freedom of thought. And the angels in heaven right now got a freedom of thought. Amen. They didn't have to serve God they didn't want to. But God required servitude yes. through love and obedience. Yes. But the devil was such a clever speaker. Mm -hmm. He was able to entice a third of the yes. angels in heaven yes. to follow him yes. and rebel against God. Yes. Now, listen, that's powerful stuff here. Yes. So I'm trying to tell you, you cannot understand the personality of these hypocrite preachers. Nope. Amen. They're pretty good preachers. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good con men. Yes. Like you think they're millionaires. Right, right. A millionaire is not a fool. A millionaire is able to con a fool. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. A millionaire uses a fool. Yeah. That's why you got a fifty dollar prayer line and a twenty dollar prayer line and a ten dollar prayer line. Yeah. Yeah. Now if you want ten dollar blessing, you get a ten dollar prayer line. Yeah. What do I want to is ten dollars. But I want a fifty dollar blessing. Yeah. You know, you have to pray to God, bless you to get fifty dollars, then you get in the prayer line. And that preacher still carrying that briefcase full of money right on out the door. That's right. Oh, Lord. I'm glad I never was that big a fool. One time, I just got saved, and I went to see that preacher from Cincinnati. What's his name? Oh. And it was the basket that they was passing around. I'm telling you, it was a waste basket. <laughs> they had going down the line. And that preacher said, Now, wait a minute. How many love the Lord? Well, I can raise my hand up. He said, Now, I want everybody in the room. This is a true story, y'all. He said, I want you to reach. And the biggest denomination you've got in your pocket, put that in the basket. Now, who would give, it, uh, who would give God the smallest denomination? I said, well, hey, that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Now, I got God does a good job, but he didn't have, give me all the knowledge of the truth yet. So I had $50 bill from the 20s, because I had my own business. And I looked at that $50 bill, and I looked at that preacher, and I looked at that suit, and I was, and my alligator shoes he had on, his wife had on a mink coat, she, it, it was warm. Sometimes she had a big over shoulder, but yeah. she wanted everybody to see it. Right. She didn't fold it on the seat, she wanted everybody to see that mink coat. I looked, I said, wait a minute here. Right. And I found me a five dollar bill, and I put it in the basket. When I got to the parking lot, I was so, this is true, I was so convicted, I said, let me go back and get my five dollar bill. All right, I said, I'm honestly in Kansas and I see that. But the devil can trick you. Praise God. Sometimes that's why you got to go to a holiness church and let the word of God saturate you and yeah. get inside of you. Get yeah. inside of your mind. Yeah. Take, take, bust that old cruise out of your head and you put some good in your head. Uh -huh. You can't take nothing and put it in the inside of you. Uh -huh. Let you get something inside of you that's not clean. Get it out. Amen. That's why you make me a magnesia. Amen. I mean, you have those who magnesia. Right. Yeah. I'm eating too much bad food. <laughs> hey man, I need a laxative. Yeah. Yes. Shoot, pray, I gotta clean right. my system up. Then I go back and give me some green vegetables. Yes, Hallelujah. Give me some apples in there. Oh, I see a candy bar, I'm gonna give me an apple to eat. Yes, Lord. Listen to me. You gotta do things the right way. Because there's always another way, and that's the wrong way. Yes. Yes. As long as we stay in the faith and meditate on the word of God through truth and proper guidance, we can always make it into glory. Yeah. And we're going to make it in. Yeah. I don't care what the devil brings against us, right. we're going to fight it. Right. We're going to fight it. Right. Kick it. Right. Bite it. Yeah. Right. What did I say last week about Jacob? Right. Angel says, yeah, yeah, you want to bless him? Grab him, boy. Jacob said, all right. And grab him and got him up in a chokehold. Yeah. I know he had him in the chokehold. Because the angel said, 
I tell you, how the hell of this guy? Yeah. He wouldn't want him to be eternally loose. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to turn you loose here. Yeah. Bless me. Yeah. And the Bible said he rushed up to the break of day. Yeah. Now that meant if he started at night, he held on to him to morning. Yeah. That's a long time to rest it. But David, I told you, he had one of them reverse chokeholds. He said, no, I ain't never going to turn you loose. Yeah. And the Bible said he had to touch the hollow of his thigh. Yeah. for him to release him. And he said, now you're blessed. Yeah. What? But he held on. Oh. Held on. Yeah. Yeah. He kept holding on. He never quit. Brothers and sisters, they never give up. Right. Get you a chokehold on holiness and say, I ain't never going to put you down. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, don't let me say, I want to be your bride when my way seems dark. Hold me by your side. vision. I thank God for the word of God he brought out regarding David and how he had to write that 23rd song. Yeah. It's one thing boy, when your own family members trying to get you, but that's alright. Yeah. David didn't get discouraged. He had to do a little running. That's alright. But he ran to the right place. He ran to the Almighty. Yeah. He didn't run away from the Almighty. He ran to the Almighty. Glory. Yeah. Yeah. also brought out about our endeavor. And thank God, because those plants, man, you working around COVID, they want you to work Saturday, they want to slave you to death, 15 minute lunch break. Lord, yeah. That's what we're dealing with. But thank God. Thank God for our great problem. Oh, that's going to happen. I thank God for all the saints who work hard. I don't call him one sister off, especially this one sister. My goodness, she's older than me. Man, I get home, I, I feel, man, so I'm taking a nap. But thank God for it, for yeah. If she can do it, we can do it. We all can do it. We all are doing it. Yeah. But again, God sees our labor. Yeah. And probably our labor is not in vain. But we come not going to plant. Yeah. Come not going to press no time clock. Round the pressing spirits. Yeah. Lion spirits. Yeah. Devil spirits. Yeah. Tell them I can let these spirits. We're going to have our own in Jesus' name. So we thank God for our prophet. Thank God for his visit. Thank God for the time we have the church tonight. Church being encouraged. We came to church happy. We leave it happier. Now we all stand to be dismissed. May the Lord watch. Between me and thee. While we're absent. One from another. In Jesus' name. God be with you.